take a little sertraline and get this shit show started. Hello, I'm Natalie Megan. This is Weirdo Book Club. and Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be discussing begrudgingly and regretfully The Pawn and the Puppet by Brandy Elise Saker. Seeker. Saker. I'm sorry, I don't. So I first heard about this book on TikTok, of course, and it was being ripped to shreds. And rightfully so. There's some really problematic harmful things in this book, an incomplete list of trigger warnings, first of all. Second is the horrible misrepresentation, some would say romanticism, of mental illness. And also, the transphobia is thick in this book. There is one scene with one trans person, and it is absolutely atrocious. I'm not going to get into all of that. A couple of creators down below that did go into all of these problematic things in the book. Reese Reads is a trans content creator on TikTok and they talked in depth about how harmful this book is. And Rachel Reads did a video that was informative and insightful but also very entertaining because I live for her sass. So I'm linking that down below as well. If you take the transphobia out, you take the harmful misrepresentation of mental illness out, it is still such a bad book. It is such a bad book. And I know that a lot of people hear that, myself included. Our ears perk up. We're like, I hate read, gimme. I'm trying to do a service for you. I read it, we're gonna go through it. We're gonna come out the other end, hopefully unscathed. I've already been burned by this book, but that was a choice I made. I don't want the same for you. I love you. I want the best for you. This book is not that. So I took the hit for you. You're welcome. Speaking of things that I do for you, I wanted to thank you for what you do for me. I have a Patreon page. I wanted to shout out my Patreon, Patreon. I wanted to shout out my patrons really quickly because you guys have been so good to me this year. Your support means so much to me. So I just wanted to take a second to say that to you. I'm linking my Patreon down below. I also have like a virtual tip jar over at Kofi, Coffee. I don't know how you say it. You can also, if you have a book that you love or hate, you can commission me to review it. I've seen a lot of people do it in the book community, but also when I read The Wild, you guys remember, I'm sure, people were like, I feel like we should pay you for doing this service for us. And I was like, you can, you should, please do. You know, silly me, I thought The Wild would be the worst book I read this year, but the universe said, ha ha, you're a dumb bitch and brought me the pawn and the puppet. So now I'm bringing it to you because I think if I call my sister one more time and talk about this book, she's going to block me. So I need to get it out of my mind and I'm gonna give it to you. So what I'm gonna do first is just give you a synopsis and then just go through some minor information like details, things like that, and then we're gonna discuss the trigger warnings. Let's, let's hold hands and say the Lord's Prayer. The Emerald Lake Asylum is not a place most desire to go. 19-year-old Sky Lena, however, made a promise that she must keep. Once hired, she only had one purpose. Prove to the council that the barbaric treatments such as waterboarding, scalding baths, and beatings are no longer the answer. But that all take wow, but that all takes pause when she meets the source of terror in the asylum. A patient with a split personality. On one side, he's the bloodthirsty genius Dessen. On the other, a hidden persona that is buried deep in his subconscious. When Dessen is caught in an attempted cell break, he faces execution if Skylena can't bring out his core personality and reveal his humanity. She has 90 days to save his life, and the only way to do that is to let him consume her into his world of moves, counter moves, and master puppeteering. With each passing day, their bond deepens, a forbidden attraction forming against her best judgment. Little by little, Skylena uncovers the sinister secrets of his past that turned him into the monster everyone fears. And Dessen proves to have one weakness despite the terrifying, indestructible persona he presents to the world. I bet you can guess what it is. Her. Okay, so that's bad. And that's like setting us up for like, first of all, her name. This book is so stupid. And her name is bad. And every single time I had to read it, it hurt. It physically hurt me. But anyway, let's get into the details. This book is classified as a fantasy dystopian dark romance. It has 351 pages, which I feel is inappropriate. <laughs> and... 
Uh, the triggers are, there's a lot of them. Transphobia, misrepresentation of mental illness, murder, kidnapping, gratuitous violence, depression, suicide, torture, domestic violence, eating disorders, hallucinations, misogyny, poisoning, sexual assault, rape, pedophilia, romanticizing of mental illness, gore, death of loved one, child abuse, decapitation, female oppression, hostage situation, body shaming, panic attacks, misrepresentation of trans people, emotional trauma, child sexual assault, child sex trafficking, and incest. Whew! That is a lot. This whole book, I think, just exists as a way to upset the reader because there are no stakes, there's no plot, the characters are unlikable, the world building is shitty. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me calm down. Whew. So let's start with like, like, I'm gonna try to build a foundation, but there literally is nothing. So I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> I admittedly don't read a lot of fantasy because my brain doesn't do well with the intense world building. And even if it's done well, it's very challenging for me to envision this world that the author is trying to build for me. This book, it's not done well and in, in no way. I have no idea where this is, what time this is, the stakes, the expectations, nothing. There's a map and the island or continent or whatever is called dementia. Dementia. And from my understanding, the city that this mainly takes place in is called Chandelier City. And on the outskirts of Chandelier City is a rural poorer area called the Bear Traps. Okay. All right. There's also a dark forest in dementia that people are afraid to go into for some reason. It has something to do with dangerous creatures that live in the woods or did live in the woods. There's a lot of folklore that is like teased, but never elaborated on. For instance, there's like a Rottweilen, which is like a wolf, a dog, bear, thing, I don't know. We also have the Night Dopper that is talked about briefly. Apparently Skylena had a run in with one at some point. I don't know. I don't understand the timeline of any of this, but anyway, when I heard Night Dopper, all I thought was the Wendigo from Supernatural season one, episode two. Whatever, sure. What about the society, right? Yeah, let's talk about it. I don't know. There is a government body called Demechnev. And in the book, it says that it covers war, order, discipline, and societal cosmetic standards. Repeat? Like, what does that mean? Don't worry, I'll tell you. Apparently in high society, which Chandelier City is, and I'm allergic to something, I'm sorry. Women only are expected to adhere to a certain set of rules and expectations that are set for them by this government body, I guess. Why? Don't ask that question. You gotta stop asking that question because you're not gonna know. The regimen that women are expected to adhere to is called the Lady Doll Regimen, which includes like intense beautification, which obviously I'm a part of. <laughs> Lathering, soaking, scrubbing your hair, oils, lotions, all this stuff. You have to do it every day. You have to soak in a tub of herbs and oils every single night, which, you know, that seems like a yeast infection waiting to happen if you ask me, but whatever. But the main part of it is that you're expected, women, women are expected to never eat. They only are supposed to eat when they feel faint. Apparently women don't need food to live or have energy or survive. Later on in the book, when Skylena is in town, she passes by these like lounge chairs on the side of the road. And whoever she's with is like, oh, those are fainting couches for if you, you know, haven't eaten and you feel faint. Because women don't need food. You're supposed to be skin and bones. And if you're not, you run the risk of being thrown into the asy asylum, which I'm like, oh my God. Oof, it's been real. There's another branch of this government called Surviva. And Surviva deals with health, general nutrition, mental illness, and religious standards. I don't know what that means. It's never explained. And there is an agreement between the two governing entities that they don't have any power over the other ones. Like a system of checks and balances. Demechnef can't do anything in Surviva institutions and vice versa. There's also like a weird, like I said, I don't know the timeline of any of this because at one point 
they're talking about electroshock therapy, which you need electricity to do. And the next, they're talking about cobblestone streets, oil sconces, gas lamps. Why we have electricity? What the fuck? Now that we are talking about the governing bodies and how they can't cross over into each other's things, let's talk about the characters who are also so shittily developed and shittily written that it makes me want to cry. So, set change. My camera was like, oh, were you filming? No, you weren't. I'm gonna start with the little nuclear family, so to speak. This is the Ambrose family. We have a father named Jack, a mother named Violet, and twin daughters named Scarlett and Skylena. They're not one big happy family though. This is basically the parent trap if the parent trap was in hell. Violet and Scarlett move closer to Chandelier City. She just takes one of the twins and yeets on out of there. And Jack and Skylena stay behind the bear traps. One day, Jack just apparently starts beating the shit out of Skylena. Not making a joke about child abuse. I'm not gonna do that. But I wanna beat the shit out of Skylena too. But fully formed. We'll just cut that out. <laughs> so Jack's, you know, whooping up on Skylena. Locks her in a basement, beats her with a club. She has to go to the hospital once, at least, that I remember. Oh, well, Violet probably took Scarlet and, and rescued her from this future, right? No. Violet just sells her into sex trafficking at the ripe age of six. Locks her in a closet in their home and just lets men come on through. And I feel like if y'all were just going to be absolutely horrific to your children, you could have at least stayed together, right? Because then the kids could bond and have each other as a source of comfort and consolation. But no, I guess it's a divide and conquer sort of story. At a certain point in the story, Scarlet and Skylina reunite. It is after Jack unalives himself and Skylena just moves in with Scarlet because apparently Scarlet works at the asylum with no experience. After Jack unalives himself, you know, they're living together, they're hanging out, they're bonding. Scarlet's telling her about everything that happened to her and Skylena's like, I was abused too and they're, you know, bonding, which you know better late than never, I guess, but either way, they're not doing well. Skylena finally convinces Scarlet to go visit Jack's grave, which I don't know why bother, but whatever, kids do weird things. So they go and who's there but Violet. Anyway, Violet in this weird moment that is already really tense, just shits on Scarlet, says she deserved everything she got. She's not her daughter, no daughter of mine or whatever. And then leaves causing Scarlet to go into a depression spiral. Duh, understandable. And since the, these girls are both kind of, you know, passionate about mental health. We'll say that. I'm not going to say that they're skilled. You would think that they would have like a base knowledge of like what to do for someone in a mental health crisis. No, they don't. They get back to Scarlett's house. She's obviously not doing well. She's in distress. You know, what I would do as someone else who is not qualified to be a mental health specialist, but is knowledgeable enough to know how to handle someone as a person, I would have just sat with Scarlett until, you know, she calms down a little bit, holds space, whatever. We're not gonna do that. Skylena instead goes and, and, and picks wild blueberries to make a pie. Cause Scarlet used to do that for her too. When, I don't know, because I thought that they had like just come back together. But like I said, it's never explained. Let's move on. So Skylena's out farting around the forest looking for blueberries, like a dunce. And she comes back and finds Scarlet locked herself in the closet and um, you know, She's gone. For some reason, Skylena doesn't want this to get out. So what does she do? She just sets the house on fire. What did you expect her to do? I mean, who wouldn't do that? Right, right, right? <laughs> That's when another person comes into the mix. His name is Oric. Oric is a high society man of power and prestige in Chandelier City. And he just decides that he's just gonna take Skylena in. He's like, you can come just come live with me. I don't have any interest in being anything other than platonic with you. Pinky promise. She's like, sure. Just moves right in. Cause she's smart, but like a strange man, you don't know. It's like move in. You're like, sure. Why did you burn the house down? Whatever. On Oryx's word, Skylina gets a job at the asylum. Actually, she gets an interview. So like I said, he has power, he has sway. He's obviously, highly respected 
We don't know much else about him though. He had a fiance, it didn't work out. Now he lives alone and he wants Skylena to move in with him. So she does. I feel like it's a good idea. She gets an interview because Auric like puts in a good word for her at the asylum. And she gets there and she meets a woman named Susius. Susius gives her like a tour. She talks about the, the treatments and Skylena asks, well, at what, what rate do you have people, you know, being able to go back to society and their families? And she's like, no, we don't do that. We are not concerned with that. Okay. Anyway, she gets the job with zero experience, freshly 19 and riddled with trauma herself, which is another thing that gets on my damn nerves. She talks a lot about her trauma because you're getting it from her perspective. So you hear a lot about her flashbacks, her dreams. She draws a puppet, which is like plays into the title, I guess. But like that is literally never explained. It's talked about three times where she's in a high stress situation. And so she either physically draws a puppet or mentally draws a puppet to calm herself down. There is nothing else for me to tell you about that. That's all. But anyway, she walks us through a lot of the stuff that she's carrying, a lot of the trauma that's weighing her down. And then also says that she's not going to tell anybody about it. This trauma is mine and it'll stay that way. And yet, <laughs> she's waltzing her way into the asylum with the goal of implementing talk therapy and keeping her promise to Scarlett. But she doesn't partake in talk therapy. She actually refuses to talk about her trauma. So I just, what? Anyway, she gets her job. Everybody at the place hates her. She gets back to Oric's house after her interview and says, it went great. Thank you for the word of encouragement and like talking to them about me and getting me in there. And he's like, listen, I don't have, one more time, I don't have any interest in you romantically. However, if you're gonna be living here, you need to start doing your lady doll regimen. He says this to her over dinner, you know, she's eating. And then she's like, oh, I guess that's gonna stop. It never really does though. She eats consistently through the book. So I guess it's not like strictly, like, I don't know. Skylina is just really special. So she doesn't have to, she doesn't have to know what she's doing to get a job. She doesn't have to like follow the rules that the society set for women specifically. But she doesn't have to do any of that. No, none of it. So she goes, she gets ready. She does the ritual, whatever. She goes to bed, she goes back. She's, you know, introduced to an array of, colorful little quirky characters that are actual criminals. And the first one that she meets is Chekis, and he is a family annihilator, which is cool. The whole thing is that she comes in and sees him having a, a simulated drowning therapy. She's like, mm, I got this. So she just starts talking to him and she's like, I don't think you meant to kill your family. And he's like, yeah, I did. <laughs> He's like, the Lady Doll Regimen had warped their mind and was consuming their entire existence. And so I slaughtered them and stripped them naked and put them in the town square so that the world could see what they did to them. Could have just like moved, my dude. They go to the bear traps. They don't have to do anything there. Whatever. He loved them. That's the conclusion Skylena comes to. She says, so you saved them. And she, she gives like a real paternal vibe to this man who murdered his wife and daughter. She cured him. She got him to speak. He never spoke to anybody, but she was like, hey buddy, let's talk about it. And he was like, all right. She goes to the next person. She meets a couple other ones, but I'm not gonna meet. So she meets another one whose name is Niles, but he goes by Cupid because he thinks that it's his job to make people fall in love. And how he does that is like kidnapping them and putting them in the basement and like maybe like sexually assaulting the women, whatever. It's like really cute. It's a love story. Niles Cupid is the one that has the storyline that is just chock full of a transphobic moment. Like absolutely abhorrent, disgusting. I'm not even going to read it. Like I said, you can go and check the links and they'll tell you about it, but I'm not gonna do it because it was really gross and so harmful. But anyway, that's part of his trauma that led him to think that he needs to help people fall in love. What he ends up doing is killing them. Isn't that cute? Oh my God. And she talks to him too, but he's like not wanting to talk to her. So what does she do? She's like, I'm going to take your water treatment for you. And they just like blast her with the hose. And Susius is living for it. It's either Susius or another girl. Everybody hates Skyletta. I hate Skyletta. Whoever the conformist is, that's what they call the workers at the hospital. They just blast her with the water, which, you know. It's not funny, guys. And Niles is like, why would you do that? And she's like, so you'll trust me. So he, of course, just opens up right like a book, right? Crack the, crack that book right open. 
just took a little torture session to do it. And he starts telling her his story and whatever. And he's like really goofy and so fun. And like he kills people, but it's, it's cute. So that's a bond, whatever. She's just, she's going through. She's popping in a room and coming out of success. Everything is going well. She's so freaking talented with zero experience. Finally, she's like, what's that? And it's the 13th room at the end of the hallway. And everybody's like, we don't go in there. He's a half man, half monster, genius, crazy person. with A split personality. He's dangerous and no one goes in there. But Skylena is doing such a good job that they let her. And before she goes in, she meets with the person who worked with him before, who he paralyzed from the neck down. Just paralyzed a woman, no big deal, casual. The woman is healed from that somehow, but her mind kind of never came back from it because it's awfully traumatic. Which is another thing, this world has such competent medical care that they can heal a person who was paralyzed the neck down but oil lamps somebody help me she goes and talks to this woman and the woman's like well he's been expecting you and you're like oh, cryptic what you know it's supposed to be interesting it's not she goes in he's like what took you so long to get here and she has a feeling of deja vu i don't fucking know they bond because skyline is so good at her job right over time they bond they're talking and he's telling her stuff about her life that he shouldn't know. So you're like, what's this? It's never really explained. He just knows everything. Another little fun fact about Desen is that he is never fully restrained. Like they'll have him in chains, strapped to the wall, locked down in his room. But he can pretty much go wherever he wants and does often. What we find out about Desen is that he checked himself into the asylum. And this goes back to what I was saying about Demeknev and Surviva. That they can't cross into each other's jurisdictions. They have no power. What we end up finding out about Desen is that as a child, he watched his family get slaughtered in front of him when he was like six. And then Demeknev kidnapped him and trained him to be like this ultimate fighting champion. Not that. Like this ultimate warrior, genius, superhuman guy. He went through a lot of stuff. He's very traumatized. And that's why his personality split. I don't know a lot about dissociative identity disorder. But I'm told this is not an accurate portrayal. And I, you know what? With every other horrible thing in this book, I believe it. That's, that's his tragic backstory. And... You know, Skylin is trying to pull it out of him, but he's being coy because he's just like so cute. Like he kills people, but he's like so cute. There's absolutely no sexual tension between these two, which I think they're supposed to be. Skylin is definitely horny for this guy, but I'm uncomfortable the whole time because the book sucks. At one point, Demeknev is coming for a visit. They can't do anything, but they're coming to visit. And Desen obviously doesn't want them to know that he's there because he escaped them and checked himself in here. He's hiding out. But like I said, if he can go anywhere and he's a superhuman killer guy, why aren't you just in the woods? Because remember, they won't go in the dark forest anyway. So why aren't you just hanging out in the woods? I would be in the woods. Demeknef is coming for a visit. Desen's like, nah, I'm not going to be here for that. So he just slips out of his room because like I said, he's not ever locked down completely. He has free reign. It doesn't make any sense. So that takes any stake of like getting him out saving his life, it just throws it away. Because he wanted to be there, he voluntarily came, and he can leave willy-nilly. So, who cares? He gets out, and you know, he's like, run in, run in. And the head of the asylum is like, Skyletta, you're to blame for this, you let him out, and goes to like, slap her, which, same. Dustin shows up in the nick of time. I think it's supposed to be that who hurt you kind of trope, but I hate them, so I don't care. Then, instead of just like, rescuing her he like pulls a knife to her throat and says that he'll kill her right there if they don't leave him alone and so he just kidnaps her and takes her to the basement of the asylum which i feel like if you were gonna go somewhere just go on you know he just went literally downstairs <laughs> so and then they get to the basement and skylana has a panic attack she's not a big fan of basements obviously and so Dustin's like listen to my voice i'm here you're safe. I'm like, I don't think I am. He just had a knife to my neck, but okay. She comes out of it and they're fine and they're talking in the basement. And then he gives her these like trinkets. One's like a little stick man and a rock. I don't know. They're not explained. She holds them and has like all these weird feelings, which are also not explained. And then Destin's like, listen, I need you to go to this abandoned building out in the middle of nowhere. I need you to go to this floor, look in this room. You'll find something that will tell you more about my story. Cause at this point she's trying to get information out of him, let him heal, right? She's like, cool, I'll see you later. Before she goes, 
they have like a meeting of the asylum council or whatever and they're like we need to just execute him because he almost killed everyone yesterday he literally didn't but whatever and sky lynn is like no i can fix him and they're like you have 90 days this has only been like a few weeks i think because again none of this is clear but i think that the timeline is jack unalives himself she moves in with scarlet scarlet unalives herself. Skylina sets the house on fire, then moves in with a stranger that she doesn't know, gets a job that she's not qualified for, and now she has three months to get the core personality of Destin to come out and save his life. So this is like what, like a, like one fourth of a calendar year? When I was 19, I flunked out of college and dressed up like Britney Spears from the Slave For You video, but Skylina's out here making moves but she has 90 days to save his life. So that's her goal. She's trying to save his life, which again, he can escape the hospital whenever he wants. So I don't know what to tell you, but she's like determined. They're trying to sabotage her at the asylum. So somebody poisons her. So she like leaves one day and on her way to Destin's room, she starts feeling a little weird, a little icky. And she just passes out, starts projectile vomiting and is in his room and he like unshackles himself so he can help her of course he like also escapes goes out into the woods gathers an amalgamation of herbs and comes back and is like eat this you'll feel better and she does because she's stupid so he's like you're gonna walk out of here and it's gonna be like a phoenix rising from the ashes because they thought they hurt you they thought you'd be out for days but you're not because that saved you so she does and susius is like Oh, hey, how are you? You should come to my house for dinner. Everybody at the asylum is going to dinner. So she invites Skylina and Skylina's like, okay. And so she goes to the gala. <sighs> I'm so tired. This story is the worst. Everybody from the asylum is there. She goes and she's, she talks to Destin before. She's like, oh, I'm going to that party. She's like, just don't kill anyone. He's like, cool. She goes, she's sitting there. She meets a new hire that is there named Ruth. By the end of their maybe 12 minute conversation, their first conversation, Skylina is referring to her as her soul sister. And it made me want to scream. Super bond, instant friends. When Destin shows up as one of the servers at the meal, she's like, don't hurt her. He poisons everybody with the same stuff they gave Skylina. And they're just like puking up blood and all this stuff. And Skylina, Ruth, and Destin skedaddle. And they get outside. He's like, she's like, I said not to kill them. And he's like, I didn't. It just looks like they're dying because I put some red stuff in there. So it looks like they're vomiting blood, but they're not. Ruth is like, I just imagine. She's just like, huh, okay. You know, whatever. Destin leaves and Skylina and Ruth go back to Oryx's house. They sneak a bunch of food upstairs and do their lady doll regimen and eat until their little heart's content and just gossip because they're soul sisters. Duh. That was annoying as shit. Made no sense. Like people say they hate insta love. I think I hate this more. After that, they go back to the asylum. Business as usual. No big deal. And Skylina goes to that abandoned house that Destin wanted her to. It's not a house. It's a building like this big abandoned building. She goes in a buggy that I still don't understand what a buggy is. Don't ask, it's not explained. And then she gets there, she goes to the room that he said to, and he, she finds like her initials are on something, and then a letter, I don't know. And then there's this dusty old dude like creeping around the abandoned house, and he's like, hey, I'ma rape ya. Um, and Destin just, boom, shows up, of course, cause he's never in the hospital, unless he wants to be. So he shows up and, annihilates this guy in front of Skylana. Then you get like your first little bit of tension, like sexual tension, because who isn't turned on by brutal violence and murder? 90 days comes and he's not cured. He does tell her about the altar, but the altar that he really is, his like true persona is called Cain. And Cain was the child that witnessed his family be slaughtered in front of him. And so Destin was born of that trauma to protect Cain. But Cain stays back. He doesn't come to the front, which I don't blame him. I don't like Skylina either. <laughs> Did I mention that Destin is like super hot? Immediately I'm forced to redefine what I thought was once handsome. A jaw of stubble and the finding line that could cut through a hand that tries to caress it. He murders people. Destin is finally just like, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. He goes outside, he's got like a motorcycle. And he's like, if you run with me, you know, we're on the move, we're fugitives. And she just goes, 
She just leaves. It's fine. So they're in the woods and they come across a Rottweilin and the Rottweilin is like Dessen's best friend. They like bond, they're family. He is apparently the only Rottweilin left because they were all obliterated, but we don't find out about that until the next book, which I did read. So they're hanging out in the woods. They go to a waterfall. Skylina's like, can we go in? And he's like, I promised. I promised somebody I wouldn't go in until the time was right. I don't know what that means. It's not explained. Let's move on. And then like, she wants to make out with him because she has been like horny this whole time. He's like, I can't have your lips yet, but you can have mine. And then like sucks on her earlobe for like 15 minutes. I don't know. It was very uncomfortable. Do you want to know what my tongue feels like close to your ear? Please, I say. He flicks his hot tongue over my earlobe, teasing me with his wetness. I become pudding in his arms. So anyway, at this moment, another altar comes to the front and his name is Greystone and Skylana's like, what? And he's like, there's more than three of us in here. And then the book's over. But on that little teasing me with his wetness line, I wanted to go over some of the 200 highlights that I made in this book of just absolutely horrific writing. This is after he asked her to go to that abandoned building. I roll my eyes at his confidence, mostly because it's spot on. I'll go, of course I'll go. If it gets me a step closer to understanding him, I'll walk through a field of grenades. It's a bit much. This is the first line that I saw that I was like, this book is gonna be rough. Tears perch on the bottom of my eyelids, like a hurricane meeting a dam. Uh, tears can't perch on the top of your eyelids. Like up here, it's not how that works. It's dumb, it's dumb. I exhale, feeling tired and sodden like a towel wrung out and left to grow mildew in the corner of a washroom. It's just too much. You're doing too much and somehow not enough. Then at one point she says, if Scarlet can endure it, and this is the least I could do. Scarlet killed herself. Skylena, God damn it. The thought of meeting people like this turns my bowels watery. Ugh. And the memory returns quietly to the river in my thoughts, sinking back into place without another word. I take a mental note. In the morning, I'll need to sketch that puppet again. This is what time alone does to me. She sketches the puppet twice. I still don't know what the puppet thing is. Oh my God, I forgot about this. Okay. She's having like a flashback memory of Scarlet or something, okay? So she says, Scarlet, I say softly, tenderly, trying not to set her off. Look at me, she screams in my face. Her emerald green eyes are swollen and glistening, face covered in red splotches. I follow the direction of her hands that move to the blood-stained carpet. It's fresh blood. The blood spots spread from under her. Hands are covered in it. They're all over me. They kept touching me. It takes a moment to process what I'm seeing and then it clicks into place. No, they're all gone now. The blood is just your body telling you you've become a woman. It's natural. So this is... Scarlet starting her period, I guess. And then literally several, like a couple lines later, it said, Scarlet screams, no, no, they did this to me. Look at me, look what they did to me. The crying fit starts again and her screams bounce around the closet walls. Her body thrashes about and she hits herself over and over again in the place where the blood escapes. Is she just sitting there punching herself in the badge? <laughs> That's what we both just read, isn't it? Oh, ah wanted to do that. I've, I, I mean, we've all been there. The tartness bursts over my gums, first of all, <laughs> okay? Um, your gums don't have taste buds, so it wouldn't be tartness that spills over them. It would be just the juice, and the tartness would spill over your tongue. But you know what? It's not important. He says something to her, and she goes, thunder without a sound, a whip of energy bolting through my veins. He speaks. Okay, so first of all, Thunder without a sound is nothing because thunder is the sound that lightning makes when it strikes. That's it. Thunder with no sound is nothing. I hate this book. Uneasiness drops into the pit of my stomach like uncooked meat. Gross. She's still like an oak tree in winter. So I guess the oak trees wander about in spring and summer and fall. Oh God. My knees are quivering as if they're made of eggshells. Astonishing. Eggshells don't quiver. 
I'll slip off my uniform to dive straight into the fluffy white feather bed is the icing on the warm cobbler. Now, I, I'm not a chef, but I don't put icing on cobbler. Cake, cinnamon rolls. Cobblers have like a glaze, but maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments. So I did the, <laughs> I, I read this one on my TikTok because I couldn't figure it out. So it says, then I hear a snarl, not exactly a growl, but something foul, sucking in air through its teeth and nose. So I read that to my husband and he immediately got it. He was like, <sighs> Yeah, which makes sense. But I was like, <laughs> there's just a few. There's just a few. Just to give you a little taste, this book is absolute garbage. And that is even without the transphobia, the incomplete list of trigger warnings, and the horrible misrepresentation of mental illness. It's still one of the worst things that I've ever experienced. If you have questions, please leave them below because I have a lot of questions and probably no answers, but I want to know if you have the same questions as me. This story is stupid. It made no sense. There were no stakes because this man could escape at any moment. Oh, also forgot this part. At the end, when he comes and meets her in the woods after he like goes and does something else while she's asleep or something, he's like, just so you know, I went back to the hospital and I let Chekis and Niles go. I just let them out. The family annihilator and the kidnapper, rapist, murderer. He just let them out. They don't need the care. I mean, obviously the asylum wasn't doing anything for them except keeping them from society and torturing them for funsies, but they don't need to be out. Like, what is this? This whole book is stupid. There is no point. The whole promise to keep, you know, talk there to like implement talk therapy into the asylum so that she could cure people and help and whatever. Like it, she just ends up running off with the guy that she wants to bang and he's a murderer, which is hot, you know, and it's just stupid. It's stupid. The world is awful and horribly built. I was so confused the whole time. The writing is really bad. I just hate it. I just hate it. And with that in mind, I did read the second one, which will be in a future video because I can't do this anymore. So if you liked this video, please let me know and like and subscribe and do all those fun things. I'm new to YouTube still so I don't have like a script that I adhere to it's like smash that like button but like literally could you could you do that please thank you all the links to anything that you could possibly want are down below as well as other content creators who have talked about this book in depth and maybe done a little bit better of a job than me and I needed like I said I just needed to get it out of my head and now I have done that and I appreciate you being here for that don't read this book it is um not good <laughs> Thank you for watching this whole thing and I will catch you in the next video.